Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Technology Mafia and I haven't posted a video in a while because my wife got me sick. At least that's who I blame. She probably didn't get me sick, but I've been sick for like four days. So if my voice sounds a little different, that's why. Anyway, I wanted to make a video on something a little different than the typical lens videos. I enjoy reviewing lenses, but I also enjoy looking at watches. Uh, it's one of those other hobbies that I've picked up over the years. When my wife and I were in Japan, I ended up buying a bunch of vintage Seiko watches. And I figured I would share that with you as they finally came with our shipment just this week. So anyway, let's go ahead and check out these watches. So before I start, you will notice that there are no straps on any of these watches. It's not because I don't have them. In fact, I do have some of the straps here, but they are very flimsy. They are very 70s and they are not anything that uh, I would recommend having on your watch. So here are the five watches that I brought back with me from Japan. And as you can tell, they are very colorful and that's why I purchased them because they were so unique. It's not something that you typically see every day. So I'm going to go through one by one and take a look at each one of these uh, in case you guys are interested. I'm not going to go through the full specifications of each one, but I will list the reference uh, down below if you're interested in checking them out. So this is the first one. This is a Seiko 5 Actis. And this is the Seiko 5 before Seiko 5 was a thing. Uh, very unique dial in this case. Uh, the, the blue and the turquoise -y kind of sunburst effect, but it's an S shape. Uh, it's very, very unique. Um, this watch has uh, kanji date as well as English dates and then the day. What's interesting about um, this reference, which is the 61067700, is that unlike most Seiko 5 movements, this one is in fact hackable. So you can pull the crown out, you can see the seconds hands has stopped. It is not hand windable, however. When I first purchased this watch, I was trying to adjust the date and I was finding it hard because you can't, there's only one position to pull out the crown. Then I learned that to change the day and the date, you actually push down on the crown, which is kind of unique. To change the day, you push down really hard, which I can't do, but believe me, it works. This reference usually comes with a cut crystal, similar to this one here, but this was replaced by the previous owner, and I think that the flat crystal makes the dial a lot more legible, so I do like that a lot. And case size on this one is 38 millimeters. So the next one is I almost identical except for the color. And so I purchased one and then I ended up going back and purchasing another one simply because I like the way that the indices look and the dial color was kind of interesting to me. Somehow while filming this video, I happened to lose the crown and stem, which is very unfortunate because that is probably worth more than the watch itself. Um, so I hope I can find it sometime soon, but anyway, that's why you see that there is no crown there. But this one is the exact same reference. Look at the back. It is 61067700. The size on this one is the exact same. Movement is the same. It's just a different dial color. So this is a yellow green instead of that turquoise blue. This next watch is a little less out there. This is just a plain black dial. And this is a newer model of the Seiko 5 Actis. This is probably a late 70s would be my estimation. The reference on this one is 71, oh, excuse me, 7019-7060. And you can tell that it is a newer movement because if you pull out the stem, it does not hack. You do change the date by pushing down on the pusher. I like this one in particular because of the hands. I thought that they were nicely shaped and they were loomed all the way through. Unfortunately, the loom has faded to a point where 
you can't really see it anymore. But still a great watch nonetheless. As you can probably tell, there are a lot of scratches on this crystal here. So if I do keep this one, I will definitely replace the crystal with a new one. Next one, this is perhaps the most unique watch out of the group. This is the Seiko Alnix. And this is kind of late 70s when mechanical watches were slowly being replaced by the more reliable and accurate quartz movements of the day. And this was kind of a hybrid between a mechanical and a quartz movement. In fact, let me open the back of this for you guys. This one, for those of you who are interested, is reference 0703. 3020. Open the back up, this is what you see. So it is a Seiko movement. It says 16 joules made in Japan, and there is a battery as well as a uh, balance wheel. So this is kind of unique, and what really makes this unique is just the sound that this watch creates when it's working. It's unlike any other mechanical watch that I've heard. Very um, it's, it's different, it's hard to describe. So essentially what this watch is, is a battery powered mechanical watch. The movement is all mechanical, but it is regulated with a battery. So very interesting. One of the reasons I purchased this watch was not only because the movement was so unique, but because I did like that dial. The fact that you have that blue around the edges and then you have that silver and then the way that the colors play in different lights is very unique. Because of the way the lugs are designed, it's very difficult to get a NATO to fit this watch. So you almost have to wear it with a special bracelet that's small enough to fit in right there. This one is hackable. All right, and the last watch is definitely my favorite one. This is the most expensive one and the one that I have worn the most frequently. This is a Seiko King Seiko high beat watch. Now, King Seiko is essentially Grand Seiko before Grand Seiko was a thing. So this was the luxury high end Seiko watch of the uh, 70s, early 70s in this case. Um, if you look at the back, there's normally a gold seal here. When I purchased this, it was lifted up on the edges due to some corrosion. So I just peeled it off and I have it tucked away. So that's why the back does not look like a typical King Seiko case back. This watch, interestingly, is not a screw down case back. It's not a click down case back. On the back, you will see open through glass, push set lever, pull stem. So I have never opened this watch, but from what I understand, you actually will use this little screw here and open it from the front by removing the glass element, which is kind of cool. Uh, this one is reference 5626-7000. And the reason that I picked up this watch was because of the dial. I mean, this is something that I've never really seen before. It's kind of pink, it's kind of purple, it's silvery, pearl. It's a, a dial color that I've never really seen before. And I've looked online for something similar and I still have never to this day seen something uh, with the same dial color. So I think that that is very unique and rare and interesting. Uh, this watch I have been wearing off and on for the past probably six or seven months and it has been keeping amazing time. This movement is a high beat movement so it beats more quickly than your typical automatic Seiko does 7S26. You can hear the difference and you can see how much smoother the second hand is. If you compare the two of them, hopefully the camera can pick up how smooth that second hand is in comparison to the small ticks you get with a typical movement. 37, so it's a nice and compact dress watch if you want to wear it as a dress watch. I typically wear this on a gray NATO here. I'll show you what that looks like. And it's a very easy watch to wear. 
the polishing on this watch is just amazing. Uh, I like that the lugs lay flat on your wrist. So the watch wears slightly bigger than the 37 millimeter dimension. And it's just been an awesome watch to have. So this one obviously has a hacking movement. So you pull it out. Uh, this one is hand windable as well. It's the only one out of the group that is hand windable. And when you wind it, it is just buttery smooth. Let's see if the microphone can pick this up. So that is the King Seiko, definitely one of my favorites from the group. All right guys, so that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and got to see a little bit of what is out there as far as vintage Seiko watches. So I'd encourage you to go out online on eBay or uh, go out to garage sales or local watch shops and see if you can find some of these if you are interested. I don't know what I will end up doing with these watches. I think that I will definitely keep the King Seiko because it's so unique and I've enjoyed wearing it so much. But the others, I may end up selling, I'm not sure yet. I want to consolidate my collection and right now I probably have 13 or 14 watches and I need to get back down to six. So anyway, uh, stay tuned for future videos. I will have a lens comparison here in the next day or two. I need to catch up on all of these other videos that I need to record um, and post up. So stay subscribed, like if you liked it, and thank you guys for your support. Have a nice day, bye-bye.